a reading from the book of Sirach. Happy the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste person. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. Like the light which shines above the holy lampstand are her beauty of face and graceful figure. Golden columns on silver bases are her shapely limbs and steady feet. As lasting foundations on solid rock are the commandments of God in the heart of a holy woman. The word of the Lord. Sant Evangelii secundum Mateum. Gloria a Dio, 
Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels of heaven, he will sit upon his royal throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. Then he will separate them into two groups, as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. The sheep he will place on his right hand, the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you have my father's blessing. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me. I was ill, and you comforted me in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the just will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or see you thirsty and give you drink? When did we welcome you away from home or clothe you in your nakedness? When did we visit you when you were ill or in prison? The king will answer them, I assure you, as often you did it for one of the le my least brothers, you did it for me. Verbum Domini. The emergence of the Third Order of Franciscans was not something that was uh, homogeneous, <laughs> that it was the same everywhere, and that it had, there was many lay movements at the time, the 12th and 13th century were filled with lay movements, which means that the ordinary person, <laughs> um, as a opposed to the cleric or, or the one in the monastery, uh, desired to, desiring to seek holiness and often desiring to seek holiness much more than those who by vocation uh, have professed a holiness of life, gave themselves to different works, to different forms of life. So there's different lay movements which, according to region, city, you know, household, can differ. And so at the time, right before Francis, there's uh, uh, several lay groups, which uh, in some places got off track, you know, started to deny the reality of the incarnation, the reality even of uh, the body, and then also the reality of sin, or almost we could call it an anti-reality uh, for, in a sense. So Elizabeth of Hungary did not grow up knowing the Franciscans. Indeed, she died only five years after St. Francis, and, and she was 24 at the time but had married, and in her, er, even before knowing the Franciscans, already had a great desire to take care of the poor and the sick. And her husband, Landgrave Lewis, was very, was very happy <laughs> that his wife, I mean, you have your moments <laughs> when uh, you bring, you know, that, although we have a very different sense of uh, contagions as we sit here uh, it, during this pandemic, but, uh, that, but that our Lord identifies himself with these, these, these who are, are ill. When we think especially of the identity of our Lord being hungry and naked and thirsty, imprisoned, in his passion. So 
the reality is that all of us are called to holiness. And that call to holiness is not expressed in the same way for all. So holiness isn't just according to one form, exterior form of life. So all are not called to live as clerics or monks or nuns, um, but in every state of life that we are able to grow in that love of God, which is poured into our hearts through the spirit which is given us. So when the Franciscans finally show up to, to uh, her town, so Francis had sent, you know, started sending much earlier people, uh, friars, to other regions of Europe, they proclaim a, a way of life which is embraceable by all. This is the life which our Lord himself proclaims, that we are all to repent and to believe in the gospel. And the gospel is proclaimed, the word of God is proclaimed, not simply, again, for the professional religious, so to speak, the clerics or religious, but indeed, as we know, that the word of God, Jesus Christ, comes to proclaim this word of repentance, not only at the beginning of his, his life, but even before ascending into heaven, he proclaim, tells the apostles once more to proclaim a message of repentance and belief in the gospel, that, and then baptism. So, uh, the Franciscans were able to hear confessions. This was not a universal faculty. Even today it's quasi-universal, but again, it's a faculty which is given to us uh, to, to hear confessions. And this helped, again, forming the, the soul, that a good and holy confessor is able to help the, the penitent to live the life of the gospel. This is not, confession is not, I'm, I'm okay, you're okay, even though many times we have to help reinvigorate, re-encourage the, the, not only the concept, because that is, it's not a simple concept, the very reality of the love of God for each individual soul and how God himself and his loving mercy calls us to a life not only of, uh, of peace, of interior peace, but a life which embraces a daily cross and is willing to lay down one's life for one's uh, friends, even for one's enemies, to love even our, our enemies. So, St. Francis and his roving band present a way of life which is embraceable by all. So not all are called to the radical poverty that is embraced by the Franciscans, but indeed, and is taught in the Council, Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, that all are called to embrace the, the evangelical councils, the, the counsels of the gospel as we are able to live a sparing, sharing life, to live in absolute obedience to the word of God and, and to live a life of chastity according to our state of life. Without, without these three means to holiness, some in certain elements of which, no one can be saved without living. So. That, that's a very strong sense. People can be, uh, in God's mercy, of course. Uh, but so Franciscanism is not a set of ascetical ideals or a set of just idealistic, you know, uh, mushiness, <laughs> but a concrete life that is expressed 
as ever in the living out of, of the Word of God. So the living out of the Beatitudes, the living out uh, once more of the life of Christ, of listening to his words and putting them into practice. And this, again, is not by our own power. This, Francis would say, the only thing that belongs to us is our vices and sins, that everything that we do, which is good, is a gift from God that God himself, whatever God in himself says or does in us, that we should be never to be jealous of what he says or does in another, because this, again, is a work of grace. So, St. Elizabeth, I haven't said too much about her, as I haven't prepared as well as I should, but uh, a very beautiful soul that again is naturally attracted to the life of holiness. And all of us indeed by nature are attracted and fulfilled by living out a life of holiness, living out the very word of the gospel to relive in our state of life, the life of Jesus Christ. 